Alrighty, Highway 4, heading towards Port Alberni. So we turned off the 19, the Island Highway. We're on 4 now. We're gonna stop at Cathedral Grove. This is the most easily accessible old growth rainforest in the world. Cathedral Grove is literally like, you park your car in the car park, walk about 500 feet, and you're basically standing in the old growth forest. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh, you can feel the energy. You can feel how it changes right away. I know. All of a sudden, it's like, it's so happy. It's the happiest. Cathedral Trail, forest loop walk that takes you through a forest of giant trees. The largest is 800 years old. So we are in Cathedral Grove, Douglas fir, ancient rainforest. So a lot of these trees will be very, very old. Finest old growth temperate rainforest in the world. Size and longevity, very important for the ecosystem. The moss, everything. All the ferns. Douglas fir trees are the ancient giant trees in the old growth forest. They are one of Canada's largest growing trees as they are long lived, tough and known for their rapid growth. Many of these trees are over 800 years old, surviving a forest fire that swept through the area 350 years ago. All the way from California to Alaska is rainforest. And then we have the inland rainforest in BC. We're the only, the only place in the world to have a, like, an inland temperate rainforest, which is in like the temperate zone. This is a perfect example of a nursery stump. Oh my God. So, okay. So what happened here is the tree is fallen and now little trees are growing on top of it, which is really cool. Like it's, it's a, it's a completely sustainable, amazing cycle of life, right? One, one thing dies and then out of that death springs another one. See the root system? Or what's left of it. A devastating storm with extremely high winds ripped through the Cathedral Grove and other nearby parks on January 1st, 1997. The winds toppled many of the forest giants and will be left here to provide nutrients for the next generation of giants. over 800 years old, 76 meters tall, nine meters round. It was over 300 years old when Christopher Columbus came to North America. So yeah, you're seeing the remnants of the storm, guys. So all these stumps, or all these logs, trees, have fallen from the storm of 97. Colican winds there. Apparently, it used to be a lot darker, which would make sense. Um, it's been opened up quite a bit, as you can see, with the sky. But it wasn't always like that. So, kind of cool. Thousand-year-old moss, piece of moss, basically. Yeah. Like, yeah, guys. Like, you see, you see all this. What looks like grass on these logs. That's the lichen and the various other like fungi and plant growth and if you guys walk on this stuff you kill it if you kill enough of it and the whole ecosystem suffers and you'd be surprised how many loggers are sustainable eco guys because part of logging is ecology oh yeah that's what you want people carving their names in beautiful old trees So clean, man. Like, completely clear. No sediment. You can see right down to the bottom. Oh, look, they even kept 
They didn't cut the whole tree out. They kept, they just cut like a notch in it. This is a big boy, man. Wow. Look at the base of this tree. Like what? Look at his bark too. It's so thick. Oh my God. So, so much energy. Incredible. Like I said, imagine if there was a human that was 800 years old and imagine talking to that guy yeah. or girl and imagine the things they'd have to tell you. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is the this was the house tree. Oh my god, that's intense. Oh my god. So fun fact about this place. Um Star Wars Return of the Jedi, George Lucas there. It was shot in the Redwood Forest in California, but there was a part of it, small part of it was shot here in Cathedral Grove. So it's basically the forest moon of Endor, guys. We're visiting the forest moon of Endor, the Ewoks. So if you guys see any Ewoks, let me know, write a comment. We're going Ewok hunting right now. This is, this is the forest moon of Endor. And they use the Redwood Forest in California, which is similar, right? Redwood Cedar. These are Douglas fir, California, also coastal, right? West co Western coast of North America. There was a big storm uh, in the 90s that fell a lot of these trees and chunks of the path were never reopened. But that's why there's all these fallen trees all over the place. Nature doing her logging, her natural logging. The silver lining behind it all is you see the moss and nursery stumps. So the trees will grow off of these trees. So the tree falls. It dies, it becomes compost and mulch for the forest floor, homes for animals. It also acts as a, like a nursery for moss and other trees. Other trees will actually grow on top of the dead fallen trees. And this moss can be over a thousand years old. So please, 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 when you're in these places like this, do not touch the moss. Root rot. So the rotted roots contact fresh roots and that causes issues for the trees and the ferns prehistoric plants but see so you see all this deadfall here that's kind of dried up this is all kindling right so what the loggers want to do some of them is come in not to a place like this obviously because it's protected and it's an ancient forest but in other parts of the province where it's not an ancient forest that's protected they can come in they can remove all this dead brush selectively cut trees and basically give the forest a fighting chance against the forest fire with the way they cut the trees assess right healthy trees versus sick trees because you, you see all of this you can imagine if this caught fire it would just go up like a candlestick but it's gorgeous it's about 45 minutes from uh, Nanaimo once you get off the ferry and then take the 19 there get off at Qualicum Beach and then uh, take you take you on the four we're on the eastern side of the island which is mainly fir. It's a little bit drier, believe it or not. It's a little bit drier on this side because the mountains break up some of the moisture. So we got fir on this side. This, this is all fir. You see Douglas fir. And then on the west side, facing the ocean, it'd be all hemlock. The ferns. I love the combination of like the, it feels very like prehistoric. Oh, it's so nice here. Sustainable logging guys. You can log environmentally friendly ways. You know, obviously cutting this stuff down is not okay. It's not cool at all. These trees have been here so long that they serve a different purpose in the ecosystem now because of their maturity and the root systems and what they do for the forest and like oxygen. Most of our clean oxygen is coming out of here. Like I was saying before, fire line falling, making barriers so that when the fire can only go up to a certain point, it stops and it can no longer continue to burn the forest. Clearing brush, deadfall, kindling, tinder, all this, all the stuff that is gonna cause stuff to just flare up you're getting rid of the dead trees that are going to light up like candles and then cause problems for all the healthy trees 
that are existing. And some of these trees live thousands of years. It's really important to protect them, but there's other parts of the forest like sick trees, dead trees. Anyways, logging can't be sustainable. It's not, it's not just like cut and dry. Logging is bad. Loggers are horrible people. Destroying the environment, blah, 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 blah. Like, yes, logging can be bad. Cutting down old growth rainforests is not okay. That's not cool. Nobody can justify that. But dead, sick, clustered trees that are just going to cause trouble for the rest of the forest, that is fair game to be logged. And it should be logged because it's actually more sustainable for the forest as a whole. It will keep the forest healthier. Just an overall more healthy existence for everything in the forest. Uh, this is incredible. We're coming, we're coming to the end of what feels like a massive journey through the never-ending amazing forest. Um, but it's over now. We've done, we've done both sides of the park. We've discussed sustainable forest development, talked about how logging can be ecologically productive for the forest and the environment and us as a society. And give, it, give it some time and really like take in how special it is. Because the best thing I can explain to you is you're, you have trees and moss and fungi and beings that live in this forest that are well over a thousand years old. So you imagine if humans could live that long. Imagine talking to a thousand year old human. Imagine all the things they'd have to say to you and all those questions you could ask. So have a good time when you're here because it's quite incredible. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the video. Sasquatch Prospector out.